Morning everyone. Welcome to Monday. I hope it feels like Monday, whatever that feels like, in a good way for you. Um, for us, it's back to back to work. Rebecca's at the dining room table with her laptop and another screen. Um, Matt's doing homework upstairs that the school have sent him and I'm sitting in the study. It, it's quite evident in the in the the way that this coronavirus um, epidemic is being um, broadcast in the news that there are really two uh, two sides to this. Putting things like economics um, aside, which I think we can do actually um, without being too naive. But two things happening in us as people. The one is the fact of a physical virus, an actual living thing that is, is affecting people's lives, compromising their bodies and in some cases causing death. Um, and then there is the other side of it, which is which is the mental health and social impact of of what it means to be isolated at this time and how we deal with anxiety and and all of those things that come along with uh, this very unusual time for all of us uh, something like we've never experienced before i wanted to read this morning just a paragraph from uh, bill bryson's book the body i got it for christmas um, i like bill bryson and i'm fascinated by uh, the human body because it is a remarkable thing and I wanted to read just the first couple of paragraphs from his chapter on the immune system. The immune system is big and kind of messy and all over the place. It includes a lot of things that we don't usually think of in the context of immunity, like earwax, skin and tears. Any invader that gets past these outer defences, and comparatively few do, will quickly run into a swarm of proper immune cells which come pouring out of lymph nodes, bone marrow, the spleen, the thymus, and other corners of the body. There is a lot of chemistry involved. If you want to understand the immune system, you need to understand antibodies, lymphocytes, cytokines, chemokines, histamine, neutrophils, B cells, T cells, NK cells, macrophages, phagocytes, granulocytes, basophils, interferons, prostaglandins, pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells, and a great deal more. And I mean a great deal more. Some of these overlap and some do multiple jobs. Interleukin-1, for instance, not only attacks pathogens, but also plays a role in sleep, which may go some way to explaining why we're often so drowsy when we're unwell. By one calculation, we have some 300 different types of immune cells at work within us. But Daniel Davis, professor of immunology at the University of Manchester, thinks the number is essentially incalculable. A dendritic cell in the skin will be quite different from one in a lymph node, say, and so it all gets quite muddled to define specific types, he says. On top of all that, every person's immune system is unique, making immune systems harder to generalize, harder to understand, and harder to treat when they go wrong. Moreover, the immune system doesn't just deal with, dirt, with germs. It has to respond to toxins, drugs, cancers, foreign objects, and even your own state of mind. If you are stressed or exhausted, you are much more likely to suffer an infection, for instance. I remember having a conversation when I was a, a youth worker in Cape Town with, uh, with a trainee doctor who was in our congregation who came to, to do a, a session with, with the young people who were part of the church's life about what he did and why he did it. And one of the teenagers asked him, you know, how he held on to his belief in God in the midst of seeing so much illness and so much um, so much pain, essentially, in his life as a doctor. And I remember what he said very strongly. He said, um, if you only knew how many, literally millions of things, could go wrong every second in your body, the miracle is that we're not all ill all the time. And that's not even... Things like viruses that come from outside, just the way our own bodies sometimes, like computers, have a glitch in them. And we, uh, we have all kinds of, I think one in 20 people, it's, it's thought, have a, an autoimmune system um, impairment or disease or, or, or struggle in some way, where their own bodies are essentially fighting their own bodies a little bit. Sounds like a lot, but I remember, I remember him saying that... Uh, it's remarkable that we're alive at all when you see how complex our bodies are and how much can go wrong. So I guess this morning, as we think about what's going on around the world, which is quite clearly about our bodies and about immune systems in many ways, 
I wanted to also think about the other side of this, which is about mental health and about things we can practically do that help us to be ourselves in ways that are good for us. There isn't just coronavirus going around. There are also other things that we can uh, succumb to. And some of them are viruses and other uh, diseases that might come upon us from outside, from within our homes. Um, some of them are just the way that our bodies and our lives and our souls, I guess, are, are weakened by anxiety and by stress and by worry in all kinds of ways. Now, our worries don't just go away because we decide not to have them or um, we just decide to be cheerful. Um, that's a nonsense. But there are some things we can do which might help us if we're feeling anxious about anything at all. And one of those is something that we very definitely can do with our bodies. And that's just to, to breathe and to breathe in a very considered way. If you've done any yoga, if you've been part of any kind of meditation practice, Christian meditation or other meditation, you will know that the breath is, is, is quite central to the experience of, of, of being present in the moment, of, of, um, of finding perspective, of, of, of slowing down what might be a, a, a heart beating too fast, a, a busy mind. When we are stressed, we often take short and shallow breaths and deep breaths help us enormously. And we could see them quite literally as part of a, a, a routine of prayer. Um, the way that we might use breath to to arrive into the moment we're in. Some scholars say that uh, even the Jewish name for God, or one of those, Yahweh, is essentially a breath in and out. Yahweh. Yahweh. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but there is an opportunity for us to to not just try and be still, but to help ourselves be still by using our bodies to do that. And so what I'm going to try and do each week, maybe on a Monday, I'm not sure, probably build that routine in, is, is, is not give you homework or lecture you or um, be some kind of instructor, um, but to give you a practice, something to do that might help during this time, even just for a week, as often as you want to do it. To, to feel connected to yourself and to how you're feeling and what's going on inside you, to maybe manage whatever anxiety you're feeling if you have some, and to, um, and to maybe do with others as part of you being centered together. So today's is really simple. Find a quiet place, as quiet as possible, and sit down in a comfortable position. You could lie on your bed if you wanted to, um, it's not going to take long, so you might not fall asleep. But if you did, hey, not like we don't have time, is it? Um, and just try to relax your body as much as possible. You don't need to do the whole, like, you know, your toes and your feet and your ankles and your calves and your um, all the way up through your body if you've ever done that kind of thing. But just try to relax and be comfortable. But if you are sitting, try to sit upright at the same time. And then if you want to close your eyes, it does help. But take 20 deep breaths, 20 deep breaths, in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, hold it for a moment, and out through your mouth. Till your lungs are empty, and then pause, and then another intake of breath. And there's no getting it right or wrong, just... Notice what's, ha what's happening to you as you do that. Notice how you feel. Notice your body as part of, of being in your body and using your breath to be in your body. And then perhaps after the 20 breaths, you should be, uh, because I've never known this not to be the case for myself when I've done this, you should be feeling much calmer than you were. You should be feeling... Um, kind of attentive and aware of of where you are and the space you're in and your body and, and how you're sitting or lying. And if you'd like to then just think about how you're feeling, what you're thinking about, what's what's buzzing around inside you after that opportunity you've taken to just slow down and let your breath be part of calming you. 
and maybe at the end of that time whether you've asked those questions or not just to say what's most important right now what's most important to you right now and what's the next thing you should do right now it may be pick up the phone and phone somebody it may be make a cup of tea it may be you know what I'm actually quite relaxed lying on the bed here I think I will just lie here until I fall asleep and have a nap um, it may be doing something physical and active that is just as good for your mental health as it is to sit still and breathe we need to look after ourselves we need to do what we can to stay um, as positive as we can and as present as we can and as um, and as unbusy inside as we can because that's good for us and therefore it's good for other people who are with us and share our lives and there's no reason not to call that prayer just using our breath to pay attention to ourselves and be in the moment and hold ourselves in the world and the people we care about in those breaths and come out of that with just one thing in mind or the next thing to do and to maybe do that breathing a couple of times a day a couple of times a day whenever the opportunity strikes or whenever you begin to notice that you are in a place where having done it before you're quite sure it will help I don't think you'll ever regret doing it but you might regret not taking up the opportunity when you feel the need to just come back down with your feet on the floor and feel what you feel and be where you are and be 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 calm in the midst of that so happy breathing Monday let's call it happy breathing Monday um, I hope that that's helpful for you if it's something you've done before then keep doing it if it's something you've never done have a go part of the gift of any exploring of faith life um, prayer meditation um, anything that helps us to be attentive all of those are good things and so have a go and if it works for you keep doing it if it doesn't just put it aside but but I would say this persevere for a couple of days it it may be quite hard at first you may uh, you may still feel quite skittish and anxious and and want to jump up and, and carry on with doing things because that's your way of either dealing with things or avoiding things could be either but stick with it do some do some good deep breathing and see what uh, what what emerges from that breathing so loving God thank you for our lungs and for our breath and for and for your name Yahweh which which sounds like spirit and air and movement and we pray that today you would help us through this week beginning today to uh, to breathe well hmm? to to notice our breathing and if our breathing is short and, and shallow to to give attention to that and to pause and to breathe deeply yeah to fill our lungs and to empty them and in doing so to know that we are alive and we give you thanks for our bodies we give you thanks for our immune systems and all those cells that have all those different names and all the things that they do quietly and 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 consistently within us thank you for the miracle of being alive today and for the bodies we have however much we may or may not be struggling with them in some way at the moment thank you for today thank you for our breath thank you for our life bless us just for today with an ability to to pause and be present and be calm amen see you tomorrow